Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Reality Game Form Survivor Podcast. I am your host, Colin Connors. With me, as always, is my wonderful co-host, Patrick Sullivan. Hi. We are also joined tonight by the wonderful Stephen Lehman. Hello. The very bland Alex Cash. What? The uh, Latina flavor, Alicia Garza. Hey, y'all. And the tall man, Jack. Hello there. Ooh, maybe you could be the Slender Man. Do you like that? Do you like that nickname? Is that a good nickname? Alicia, is Slenderman a good nickname for Jack? No, it's spooky. It's spooky. (laughs) And what would you describe Jack as? Coming from, you know, the couple dynamic of y'all two. What would you describe that? A pumpkin? No. A cute butt man. A cute butt man. I'm not calling him that. So we had a very interesting episode of Survivor, uh, the biggest blindside of the season. And we also had a lot of other little things go into play. So we're going to delve right in. We're going to talk about each little uh, thing that happened this episode. We're going to analyze it to death. So let's go to the very, very beginning of the episode. And, of course, it was Reed being like, oh, I'm so upset. And then I loved it how they had the audacity to ask Reed, hey, how are you doing? As if that's going to, like, improve anything or... I don't know. I always always find that funny when whenever there's a blindside like that, people act like, "Oh, oh, it's how are you? Are you okay?" Like when that's asked, are people just playing the game, or do you think they actually give a shit? It's just awkward. Like, are they just supposed to sit around in silence or not acknowledge anything? It's like just word vomit that comes out because it it's too quiet or something. Mm-hmm. You know? Kind of like with this cast, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's kind of the only thing we really had at the beginning of the episode was Reed being like, oh, of course I'm upset, blah, 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 which I mean, that's to be expected. But Jack, if you're Reed, what are you thinking right now? What's going through your head? Are you thinking, hey, I want to go through my ally's shit and put a target on him? No, I think you take a few minutes or however long you need to compose yourself and get over the fact that your loved one is gone and then get your mind back in the game. And I think he did that well because you showed... That he was upset that Josh had left, but then he immediately like started playing the game more than he had ever this entire season. So I appreciated that he kicked it into high gear. Mm-hmm. Does anyone see any negatives about Reed uh, kicking it into high gear? Uh, I mean, I think yeah, he got lucky. The fact that Jeremy went home because of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what exactly happened. I guess we'll talk about that later with the edit. But him going through Keith's shit and going and telling everyone, I guess was an idea that he had to just throw some chaos because otherwise it would have been boring. They would have just voted him out. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if that ultimately led to his success. I, I don't think it did. I think all of his actions worked independently of what happened with the vote. It's just, a, yeah, a number of events fell in his favor that just mm-hmm. happened to. Um, and if anything, I think Reed kind of shot himself in the foot by going through Keith's bag. I mean, hashtag rookie mistake. I feel like it's a rookie mistake to put heat on your own alliance. Well, he it was him or or someone else, you know. He and he wanted it to be someone as long as it ain't me. That's one twice. And, and I guess I see the uh, nobility of it, or I understand why he did it. I just felt that it seemed we were edited to show like that was his first move was to target someone in his alliance instead of you know targeting someone else. Alex, what do you think about this? And Reed going after Keith. Um. Well, essentially, I think that. Uh... I, I think that, well, in a, in a secret scene, Reed explains that uh, he that he knew that he, the target was on his back and he was trying to sh- shift it off himself because, as he put it, in order to outrun a bear, you just have to outrun the slowest guy. So, um, so I think his mentality was that. Um, since that alliance failed, he's okay with he's okay with trying to throw them under the bus, and that was also Alex's mentality that uh, the alliance had failed, and so he's happy to vote for Reed. So, I, so that alliance was really not held held together very tightly, mm-hmm. and so it was the dissolution of the alliance that we were seeing. And look, okay. if you can make it another round, then there's always opportunities later to get in. With the other mm-hmm. people. That's so. true. That's true. I don't know. I like to think that if it happened to me, obviously I would turn on my own alliance if need be, but I would you know attempt something else first. So I do want to go ahead and move on to the reward challenge. And I don't give a shit about the mod wrestling thing, so we're just going to talk about what happened at the very end of it, which was Natalie and Jeremy giving up their places for John and Jacqueline. Has this ever been a good move in Survivor history? 
Steven. No, I'll, no, Alicia let's, says. Let's that. look back to Brenda um, in that one season. Caramon. 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 There yeah. we go. Um, where she gives up her reward and is immediately booted because she's seen as too nice, and the jury will think she's like too nice and deserving of the prize. It's just a bad idea. You could go. It didn't gain Monica long. any respect either in Blood versus Water One, so I don't know why people are doing it. Yeah. You and could go this. back to. Um, I mean, it got Holly respect, but she got voted out. Yeah, yeah that you, was also Final Four. But think about it. Like, go back to um, Guatemala when Cindy had exactly, the exactly, to Cindy and the car first. Mm-hmm. and be voted out, or take the car for herself and be voted out. You know? Yeah. Well, I think that's, I the think correct that's answer is to throw every reward challenge. And actually, you Alex have to be in that position. Actually, actually Alex, I completely, one hundred percent agree with you on that because I rallied against this during uh, Caramon. I think it's bullshit that the producers even do something like with Brenda, where they go, "Oh." You won the reward, but you can give the reward to everyone else because it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation, and you just want to challenge why are you faced with that. Yeah. Anyways, Steven, uh, are there any other interest- instances we see of this in Survivor history of, besides like the Cindy and Monica example of people? Well, that, that was what I was going to sort of bring up with uh, the reward giving away. You have, in almost any situation, when the car happens... Uh, well, used to anyway. You had the option to keep it or give it away, and mm-hmm. it, whereas you know that was more of a certain set in stone thing. You have it, and if you're booted, you at least have a car. Mm-hmm. Um, with Natalie and Jeremy, they they had a feast, which was right then and there. So I think for them, it was more about a long term game versus a short term game. Mm-hmm. Of if they kept the reward, great. They have food, but John and Jacqueline aren't necessarily appeased, whereas well, if they show their loyalty, maybe they buy something later on. What, what, was fucked up, of, what was fucked up is that they sent Jeremy to exile. Right. It seems to me Jeremy asked to be sent to exile. Well, I, my, my assumption was that they did it because they didn't know that the idol had been found, and there yeah, was exactly. maybe so, an assumption <clears throat> that Jeremy wanted to keep the idol, the theoretical one anyway, in his group rather exactly. than risking someone else. Well, and I mean, Jeremy, in his confessional while at Exile Island says, if John had the owl, he sort of told me that I wouldn't have to be here for two days, implying that Jeremy went to Exile Island to look for the idol and then implying that he was planning to go kind of all along. But I guess my big thing is, I don't think John and Jacqueline would have been upset if, had they not given up the reward. It's not like they would have gone, oh, those assholes should have done it. And I don't feel right, like, I don't, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't know that like, anyone should have done that. Jack, do you think that's ever going to be a case where someone's going to go, oh, they should have given me the reward? Because in Survivor history, it looks like people seem to accept, okay, they, I lost the challenge, I lost the reward. Yeah, I and think the only instance of that happening, let someone would get mad, is when they're actually given, like, formally given the option by Jeff to give it up. Whereas this thing... There was if Natalie didn't say anything, they would have just like gone on the yacht and yeah. drank whatever they were doing champagne. Um, so I don't see John and Jacqueline getting mad because they were very surprised that this happened in the first place. So mm-hmm. like doubt they even thought like, oh hey, they're just gonna randomly give us the reward for being nice. And it didn't even work for them in the long run. Yeah, that's the thing is I, I don't know why you would possibly think that that could work out in your favor. Well, usually you just have I, to worry about who you. Leave on I mean, it just starts bringing right. up all of these like weird thoughts in the back of the head of John and Jacqueline that were never there before. Like, oh, are they really trying to buy us off with like one little food reward, or like, you know, what is the ulterior motive here? And none of that, none of those mind games would have gone into play had they just it didn't work anyways. So. Well, my, yeah. my my thinking was that um, you know. It, it's more of a gesture of saying thank you for voting with us this past vote. We're with you, and because of that, we're giving you this vote. Well, I feel like the re- the reward of, hey, you guys voting with us is the fact that there's now a solid voting block. That's true. But I think it's more of a, an extra little push of, like, I mean, I know that's why it was done, but it just doesn't – there's other ways to go about it that – Right, like that. there definitely are. It pinned, like, right when after that happened or whatever, it went to a John confessional about him saying it, it – like, he knew what they were doing. But it's still Survivor, and they still got to do whatever mm-hmm. it takes, so. Exactly. I don't think that – I mean, we literally just saw that. John was like, hey, that's cool that you did that, but I'm still voting you out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so let's move on to um, the next little bit which is 
Jeremy kind of just bitching so much. And maybe this was what we saw as the uh, kind of thing leading up to his boot is the fact that he was complaining just so much. And it looked like Exile Island beat him down so much. Or am I just projecting Jeremy's boot onto it? Thank you, No, I, I got a really bad feeling as soon as they went in depth with how he was getting on in um, Exile Island. And there was like helicopter shots after, as you know, as he was ending his uh, segment on Exile Island. I just had a very foreboding feeling because no one else has really gotten that into depth about like the hardship of it all. And it was just not good. Patrick, what do you think? Oh, I didn't really notice anything except for, like Alicia said, um, they did focus more on him being beat up. But it's also, he's also a huge dude. And we saw in a lot of other seasons, um, the big guys that don't eat, they burn through it so quickly. And they get burnt out because they have, you know, big muscles and all that kind of stuff. Hello? Hello? I think it's back. Are we back? Yay! Yeah, we're back. I don't know why. Like <laughs> Are you guys hearing? Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay. So we were talking about Jeremy as um, edit on Exile Island. I, I don't know. Now that I'm looking back on it, I, don't, right. I feel like Jeremy wasn't given like a golden god at it, at it, but even though we saw negative aspects of it, we saw negative aspects of Tony last uh, season, so. But I, I think it's different when you have a blood versus water season because with Jeremy, we, he, he had that connection to uh, Val, um, who his wife, um, whereas Tony, you didn't really get anything of that nature. Um, and I think also with Jeremy, he was shown to be more of a, I guess an effective leader in the sense that he sort of was attempting to at least keep his tribe together in mm-hmm. terms of uh, sanity and what have you. Um, and I think that was sort of a contrast. Um, and his ed- edited exile, I didn't see it as too bitchy per se. I saw it as more of like frustration with his own allies, not being as forthright as he'd like them to be. Yeah. He totally knew that John found that idol and he, was clever with the way he, he uh, went up to him and was like, where do you think this would be on Exile? And John, I guess, didn't convince him. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is, John doesn't seem to be that good of a liar. However, he was able to persuade Missy, which got me thinking, I wonder how tight Missy and Jeremy were to begin with, if she was able to turn on him that quickly. Jack, what do you think? I think they were pretty tight. I just... I think the thing, the major thing that made her turn was that John came to her with more trust and told her about the idol. Mm-hmm. And then from that situation, she's just like, "Well, I either go with John, who's just showed me he had, like, told me he has the idol, or I go tell this to Jeremy and we try to blindside John right now." Yeah. And given the fact that siding with John also sides with Jacqueline, that's two votes as opposed to like the two singles and Jeremy and Natalie. Mm-hmm. Just. I think weighing her options made more sense for her to go with John at that point. Well, I, I especially feel like right now, and I was thinking about this during the episode, John and Jacqueline just have way too much fucking power between them. Like, I actually you never would have thought that a couple would be able to get this much power. And I'm hoping next week something changes, but I don't know. Uh, does anyone want to have throw any insight about like why... John and Jacqueline were allowed to even get this much power. And if I'm Missy, if I'm Missy, I'm thinking, okay, may- yeah, maybe I want to work with John, but we got to get rid of Jacqueline, you know, before Jeremy. Because I think personally the move was too early, but anyways. They were just thrown in that okay. position, right? I mean, they're in the middle right. of the votes. And so they picked a side last time, and then they have the opportunity to flip flop again. And so, uh, yeah, they're picking up allies. Hopefully, someone will wise up to it and be like, hey, you know what, why are we giving these two people so much power and take one of them out? I, yeah, I was going to sort of reiterate that point. I, it was more of where the votes fell in terms of sides versus everyone, you know, mm-hmm. 
So, so, so maybe yeah. John and Jacqueline aren't that great at players. They just had the luck well, with this time. I don't necessarily think it's that. They clearly have the social mobility to where people consistently are vying for their votes. Mm-hmm. Not all I mean, the time. Apparently, well, apparently not Keith or Wes or well, no, any of the guys talk to John, So why would they need to talk to Jacqueline, right? Yeah. Um, but I think that John and Jacqueline do have that social uh, mobility to where they can go from group to group and get people to trust them. It's not that they Maybe get people it's... to trust them. It's that they um, people need their votes. I mean, people they're giving right. up uh, rewards just to make sure they trust them um mm. and so it's it's not like they yeah but i feel like next week though hopefully someone will get sick of it like mainly natalie and they'll get together and take out one of them oh, i'm so excited for natalie's breakout <laughs> mm. so um without further ado we should mention the immunity challenge which is a first in survivor history which is Ever. a foot fetish challenge um i have to say <laughs> i don't care if we do that one again it's like, oh, it's a first in Survivor history. It's a first because it's really fucking dumb. It doesn't matter that it took 29 seasons to come up with. It's not like something amazing. Does anyone disagree? Does anyone really like the foot challenge? I liked I, it. It was fresh. I it, it was new. I, I, was I liked gonna... it because I felt like I could actually do it instead of a lot of the balancing challenges that there are, which I know I would be terrible at. Just think about so what was... the, the core strength you'd have to have, though, to get those upper ones up there. Right. Yeah, well, I liked the challenge, but I thought it was gimmicky, and they shouldn't overdo it in future seasons. But the the one thing that I appreciate the most about the challenge in retrospect is that if you look at behind-the-scenes stuff, uh, they were originally planning on making a Survivor logo puzzle with your feet, but then they decided to do stacking because they realized that Survivor logo puzzles are lame, so that's my favorite thing about the challenge, really. Yeah, they're yeah. learning. Um, one more thing to add about this, though, is that I like the challenges where you have to stack something or something where, like, you're about to win, but then you could knock them over and be, like, back to square one. Um, mm-hmm. That happened a couple of times. So exciting! it's exciting to see when someone is about to get there and, like, you don't want them to win or you do and you're rooting for them or against them, and then they fuck it up. <laughs> I was gonna actually weigh in on the feet thing. I thought it was kind of hokey and cheesy and like not in a fun way. It was like, hey guys, we have something new. You get to use your feet for this challenge. I thought it was kind of silly and I thought it, I, I don't know, I feel like they did it for the sake of doing it rather than, and I, I wasn't necessarily a fan of it, but I, as long as they don't overdo, like you can only use this part, then I won't, you know, be too against it. Well, I'm kind of afraid of that because remember, last year this time we were going, blood versus water is really good as long as they don't bring it back to any time soon. <laughs> <laughs> they, they've, had some, they've had some really disgusting challenges where you the survivor use your whispers. Mouth. Yeah. Um, was anyone else really freaked out when they initially showed Natalie uh, like grabbing some blocks and like throwing them with her hand and like thinking like, oh, she's disqualified before they? Eventually, explain that like you could use your hand to put. Oh the yeah, I noticed back that. The I actually from... did the exact same thing when I was watching. I was like, "What the fuck, Natalie?" Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, I was like "Oh my god, she's gonna win and be disqualified." But obviously, yeah. that didn't happen. For for some reason, I guessed that you could at least you know reset right. the blocks with your hands as long as you didn't do anything important. Yeah, I like to actually take them, you know, and put them in the stack. Yeah, because you could kick those things halfway across the room, and then you're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, I do want to move on to, obviously, the huge thing of tonight, which was the, that amazing blindside, in which not only were the survivors blindsided, we as an audience were blindsided. And I mm-hmm. guess what I want to know is, is that okay for the editors to do in terms of this raw, flat-out blindsiding us? And... Is this going to become a trend? Because I can see this trend getting really fucking annoying really fast. <laughs> where they paint it up as one or two people are going, and then they hit you with something completely different. They, or are we just not savvy enough to notice it? So, Patrick, let's let's talk about. They this. did some foreshadowing. They they did the usual. Will it be will will, will it be Reed or will it be Keith or will we split the vote somehow? Which it's an alliance of six versus four, but the, the four they're not very together, and obviously, uh, Reed kind of threw Keith under the bus and Wes by proxy. Um, oh! Stop it. But Otis, Otis! 
He made me lose my train of thought. I mean, I sometimes get really tired of like the, okay, will it be person A or person B? Yeah, exactly. Let's find out a tribal council. Like, I don't know. But there was foreshadowing. (laughs) Not foreshadowing, but the idea popped in like, hey, could we take out Jeremy, you know? And yeah, we, that was... we didn't see any of the, the rounding people up. We just heard Missy, should we or shouldn't we? And it sounded like she didn't want to. Exactly. So that's, yeah, it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, how the hell did Reed get involved in that? Um, I, um, I well, it didn't want to be him. They could have just went up to him and been like, hey, if you want to stay in this game, vote for Jeremy. And he'd be like, oh, fuck yeah. Well, when Reed was throwing Keith under the bu- under the bus, he he was uh, talking to Missy and Baylor like, "Yeah, I'm with you." Uh, and so that may have meant more than we thought it did at the time. Yeah, that's a very good catch, catch, Alex. So the question is, should this be a continuing trend, though? I think it should only be a continuing trend in seasons like this one. If it if there are seasons in which like everybody has an equal shot and people are getting edited evenly, then it's not a good idea. But I I feel like this was more of a blind side of the hardcore fans than it was of the casuals. Oh, because yeah. Because we expected that Jeremy's Jeremy's blind side would be, you know, kind of like King Aris. Since he's the king of the island, he would get the the big foresha- the big foreshadowing and the big blind side and all that. So, it, so we knew he had to go sometime, but it was surprising that it was now. The, exactly. the legwork was done in the previous episodes, and that's what I like. Well, the, I guess uh, my other question is: Was this even a good idea by John and Jacqueline? Because now it seems like. You have so many people pissed off at you guys. Anyone can chime in on this. Um, I I can I can see the rationale behind it. I don't necessarily. But think when it would have made more sense to wait one vote and then do it. I uh-huh. I I think it would have, but at the same time, I, you know, with uh, John and Jacqueline, they were more concerned about advancing themselves, and I think for them, at least from their perspective, they may have thought it would have just been smarter to take out Jeremy when they had the chance to well, versus, if you, if you know, you look at, sitting idly by. If you look at what they've done, they've pissed off Natalie. They've pissed off, um, I guess that, I mean, that's the only person they really pissed off. Yeah, but Keith and Keith Wes and, Wes and, and Alex, Alex aren't, aren't going to want to work with them. Right. No, they'll do well, I mean, I guess if they have to. If they have to, they will. Because John and Jacqueline, they're, their votes still. Mm-hmm. They're America's couple. Oh God! I think Jesus. that one thing that is probably going to come, like if anything, this is what's going to screw them the most, is that before John and Jacqueline weren't targeted because there were other bigger targets. Like people really wanted Josh out, people really wanted Jeremy out. But now that they voted out the biggest two targets in the game back to back, who's left to be <laughs> like new Uno? I can see and, that, and actually, I agree. Yeah, I, I, think I think that, that it's the, 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 the moment that they they're not useful. Targets and it's only, like, final nine or something, mm-hmm. and there's so many more votes to go, and they don't have anyone else who they can paint as, like, oh, this person's a really big threat, we need to get him out. Yeah. I mean, what is, like, what's Missy going to do? Oh, look at Keith, he's so smart. Look at Wes, he's so cunning. Well, she may try to get uh, Keith's pension. You never that's know. True. I mean, it's missing. That's true. <laughs> that's what Missy's going for. The, the thing oh. that's missing from uh, John and Jacqueline's game is they're just deciding on who goes home. They don't have any true allies. They're just votes to people. And so as right. soon as they're yeah. not needed anymore, they're just going to be booted. Mm-hmm. So their yeah, job and- is to the middle as much as they can. But I really feel like with this group of cast that tends to act really emotionally, people aren't going to put up with that. Yeah, and... It, and also, people have been foreshadowing that they that they know what uh, John and Jacqueline are up to for a while now. Missy, in particular, said a quote that I really like: that they are very willing to piss people off and barrel through people. I think was the uh, words she used. So that that and the fact that we saw that John. Uh, hadn't thought through the uh, the idol lie. I think that really means he's going sooner rather than later. But I could picture him leaving and Jacqueline actually making it really uh, far, if that makes sense. 
I could see I could see hypothetically if John does go soon, which I think is looking more and more likely, unfortunately. But assuming John does go soon, I feel like they may just forget about Jacqueline and let her slide into the end. Because they may think she's someone they can just consistently take out later and before they realize that she's at Final Travel Council. I'm just waiting for the Reed redemption arc where he starts running <laughs> shit. <laughs> And having <laughs> confessionals and winning challenges and oh, stuff. Speaking of what, speaking of Reed, why did Alex and Keith vote for him? Uh, uh, my assumption was they probably assumed the numbers were going that way. And then you think that Reed would have secret told scenes them. confirm that. Okay, so yeah, Cash, let's talk about that. So secret scenes confirm that they thought the votes were going on Reed. So they're thinking if we put the votes on Reed, I don't have to play my idol. Uh. The the way Alec put put it was that the alliance is that that uh, since the alliance with Reed didn't work out at the last tribal council, the alliance is over. And if I vote for him, that gets me one round further. If I had to write down Wes's name, I would write his name down. Hmm. Okay, so it was kind of just like a fuck it, why not vote? Kinda. Well, I, I think also I think- if if they were talking about splitting votes and stuff, they wanted to stack as many onto Reed. So that he didn't have to play his idol, and yeah, like I mentioned so, earlier, it, it makes the most sense. Yeah, and then if Keith ends up going home, you can just like pass Wes the idol before he leaves. <laughs> oh, I, mean, I wonder if he's allowed to do that. I, aren't the what idols like in like gone or like they they're useless if the person's voted out that's currently holding it? Um, I don't know. I wonder. If okay, if right now it stands. Down. Obviously, if you get voted out with an idol in your pocket, they. I think honestly. Technically speaking, the moment the votes are being read, or like the moment after, it would be like, hey, Patrick, you're being voted out. If you have an idol, you can't give it to someone on your way out. You can give it to someone, you know, right before the votes are read, but I think once it's yeah. clear that you're being eliminated, you can't pass it. So that would be funny if Keith tried to pass it and Pope's like, no, you can't do that. And Keith yeah. was like, what do you mean, uh, alliance within an alliance? We had it all along. Yeah. <laughs> that would make for some common gold. All right. So. Next week, what the fuck is going to happen? Uh, I'm going to give... Well, Alex, actually, is there any more secret scene stuff that we should cover? Uh, yes, there were two great secret scenes this week. Uh, the first one was some hilarious stuff that... Uh, hilarious and cringeworthy stuff that happened with Alec on the Yacht Reward. Okay. So, uh, among the things he managed to do in just a couple of minutes was throw a piece of chocolate cake overboard... For seemingly no reason. Uh, try to form an alliance with Baylor and then uh, compare trying to get her into an alliance in, in his confessional to getting a dog dog to, to come your way saying, come on, here girl, here girl, come on. Oh my god. And, and then openly comp- complimenting Jacqueline on the way her ass jiggled at the challenge, at the reward challenge. <laughs> Say, saying, like, you didn't win, but A for effort. <laughs> How tactful. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. In front of her boyfriend. Yes. And, and, and he was like, you know, John, you saw it too. And John, John's, like, uncomfortably nodding. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> John's like, oh, I would hit this kid if I could. So, <laughs> any other secret scenes? Would. Yeah, there was also one where uh, we saw Reed trying to throw Keith and Alec under the bus to Missy um, by telling Missy it was their idea to vote for Baylor and not him and Josh. And Missy's like, it, but what I heard was it was you and Josh. And he's like, lies, all lies. And, and Missy says, he, he is being so dramatic. He thinks I can't see through that. And it's pretty rich that he's only talking to me now for the first time after the merge happened. So... So that was Reed's unsuccessful attempt to bond with Missy, or, or you know, to get back back on Missy's good side. But there was a successful attempt later. Um, Missy sucks. And then, and then other other interesting little bits are that uh, Baylor had an interesting quote where she says, "The challenge was a success for Baylor today, and I am talking in the third person." <laughs> um. Jeremy also talks about trying to ca- catch rock, catch crabs on Exile Island. That's interesting if you're 
interested in how to catch crabs Did in the wild. Did y'all see those crabs running around him, like, where he was sleeping? Oh, yeah. Many. That looks so <clears throat> uncomfortable. Yeah. And Natalie had a very interesting and telling uh, confessional where she talked about the reason why she had given up re- given up reward twice now. Uh, first with going to exile in Julie's place and now this, saying she would only give up rewards to people who would take that into account emotionally later down the line and who would not take that reward with a grain of salt, which means that she misread John and Jacqueline in doing yeah. that. And so it's interesting that they didn't show that because maybe they are showing that she's going to be a winner. And obviously, and I, and I want to ask, um, this is what I was thinking about, and I want to ask if you guys agree with me. As of right now, there is only two people that I cannot see winning this game, and that is Wes and Alec. Is there anyone else we can add to this list? Baylor. I, I Baylor. Maybe Baylor. Um, take that back right now. I, I'd say Reed. So, okay. I, I will agree 100% on Baylor, and I feel like Reed has a really hard shot at winning. So, I'd say Reed just based on his edit alone. Yeah, he, he, yeah but edits well, clearly don't mean shit this season. Yeah. My my thing with Reed is that if he was going to win, he should have had something before Josh left. Before he was all kind of whining about the food and kissing Yeah, he like didn't exist. Right, he yeah. had no substance whatsoever. So, but even so, we still have someone like Missy. I can see her winning. I can picture Natalie winning. I can picture Keith winning. I can I picture John win. and or Jacqueline winning. So it's it's interesting that we're at this point in the game and we have so many possible winners. Well, Reed, yeah, and I, for example, he was on the the winning tribe every single time, just about. So mm-hmm. he didn't. <clears throat> his tribe didn't get much airtime. And Patrick's defending Reed because Patrick has Reed as his winner pick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, Stephen, quick casual yes. report. Thankfully, the, well, the, thankfully, and not so thankfully, not so thankfully, this episode ignited a firestorm. Thankfully, it was all one opinion. Uh, essentially, the casual sentiment was that Jeremy, quote, deserved end quote, to stay longer because of how trusting he was and how great he was. And mind you, half of these people are the same who uh, pit were pissed at him for bullying John Rocker. Uh, but long story short, John and Jacqueline are the devil incarnate and they need to get the fuck out soon. Uh, that's basically the sentiment. And now people are rooting for Natalie. So. Well, that's always I nice. Know. I'm I'm pleasantly surprised by the rooting for Natalie. So <laughs> now, before we uh, wrap things up, does Guys, anyone have any? Yes, the Raiders are beating the Chiefs right now. What the hell? Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> All right, before we before we get to the football, is there anything anyone would like to say? Any soapboxes anyone would like to stand on? I hope Natalie burns down the camp next week if it is her beat <laughs> episode. Okay. So um, I do want to thank everyone for coming on. It's been a very interesting episode, and this season's finally starting to not be completely awful. So good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye.